of matches leading up to the split, United have lost narrowly to Celtic and Hibs and now beaten Rangers and Hearts. Stand by for that defeat of Hearts with what's known in the trade as a last gasp winner. Gordon Chisholm made one alteration to the team which won at Ibrox. Jason Scotland in for Colin Samuel and Scotland striker Stevie Crawford staying on the bench. In the heart side, four changes from the team which lost the Edinburgh derby Wednesday night. In came Dennis Wynas, Joe Hamill, Marius Kizish, and back after his lengthy suspension, Saul Mikulunas. Out, Lee Wallace, Davidas Chesnauskas, Paul Hartley, and Mark Virtual. Best of the match with Brian Etherson. It hasn't been the best a week for Hearts, dumped out of the 10 inch Scottish Cup by Celtic and then losing to their city rivals midweek. A visit to Tanadise was the next hurdle for the Jambos and they had to overcome it. Lee Miller felt he should have had a penalty here. A little push by Paul Richard, perhaps, but Alan Freeland wasn't impressed at all. If United continue to perform the way they have done in the past couple of games, then they just might survive the relegation battle. A mistake by Mark Kerr, and Hearts get into a threatening position with a quick counter-attack. Joe Hamill, however, couldn't direct the shot on target. Good recovery by the United defence, who did just enough to put off the striker. Back in action after his six-game ban, Saul Michelunius was given a warm welcome return, courtesy of Alan Archibald. A misjudged tackle by the defender and a yellow card for his troubles. Jimmy McAllister delivered the free kick and Lee Miller at least got the header on target. A decent delivery, a free header for Miller and a simple catch for Bullock. United have only won three games this season at home and they weren't too far away from the opening goal here. Jason Thompson failed to clear properly, but the angle for Barry Robson was just too tight. A good ball in by Wilson, but Robson just couldn't find a way through. Dundee United have created their own problems this season, and to give away a free kick in this area is just asking for trouble. Lee Miller fouled by Barry Robson. The referee's decision was instant and Jamie McAllister's free kick was deflected over the bar by Robson. Robson's touch was just enough to divert the shot. From the corner, Stephen Presley wasn't too far away with this header. This attempt went inches over the bar and United survived, only just. Eight minutes before half-time and United grabbed the lead. Another good ball in by Wilson, another defensive error by Hearts and Barry Robson made no mistake this time. <laughs> Presley mistimed his attempt to clear. Jason Thompson couldn't provide the clear insider and Robson finished well. Thompson's mistake was punished and Andy Webster's lunge couldn't stop United scoring. The five minute period after you score is when you're most likely to concede a goal. Well, United couldn't even get past the first minute. Joe Hamill laid the ball back to Jamie McAllister and Lee Miller's glancing header got Hearts back on level terms. Quality ball in by McAllister and Alan Archibald wasn't tight enough on Miller and Tony Bullock couldn't do anything to stop the header. 
One point ahead of Livingston, who occupy bottom place in the SPL. Well, Dundee United can't afford to switch off for a second and allow the West Lothian side to close the gap on them. Gordon Chisholm's side were almost cut out here as Hearts launched a lightning counter-attack and Dennis Wynas forced Tony Bullock into a fine save to stop Hearts taking the lead. A little step over to get beyond Mark Wilson, but the shot from Wynas couldn't get beyond the United keeper. 50 minutes into the second half in this corner from Barry Robson produced a double save from Craig Gordon. Gordon's clearance fell to Mark Kerr, whose shot went straight back to the goalkeeper, and Robson's header was in fact going wide. United have been unable to put together back-to-back -to -back SPL wins all season and were looking to do just that in this game with John Robertson's side. With confidence growing, Alan Archibald came very close to restoring United's lead with this left foot drive. He hasn't scored too many in his nine-year career. This would have been his 11th goal, but his shot went inches past Gordon's left-hand post. Hearts could ill afford their second league defeat in four days and again Stephen Presley came close from another corner. However, the Hearts captain just wasn't close enough to give them the lead. The home side were sensing that a second goal wasn't too far away and the pressure applied almost paid off here. McAllister's challenge on Jason Scotland was penalised. And from the free kick, Gary Kenneth's header hit the crossbar and United just couldn't find the back of the net. On another date, this header just might have went in and McIntyre just couldn't force the ball in either. Hopes of keeping their SPL status intact were given a massive boost as United grabbed the winner in the dying seconds. McIntyre and Crawford linked up to produce this opportunity that was well taken by Grant Brebner. Crawford's vision to pick out Brebner was excellent and the finish was right out of the top draw to give United all three points. Brebner's second goal for United inflicted Hart's third defeat in seven days. It was a big ask for the players today, but the, the support came out in numbers and got right behind them. Uh, I thought it would be a bit lethargic kind of in the first half, but the second half I thought they really kept going at it. And I thought uh, Grant Brebner's goal was worthy of winning any game. John Robertson declined to comment. That's not a phrase uh, you often hear. I uh, wasn't too chuffed with the conclusion to that match. Hearts ending up pointless. Uh, a big blow to their hopes of finishing third uh, and claiming UEFA Cup football. In fact, that defeat might well mean the end of their chances, Craig, I guess. They're way behind now. Yeah, I think they're struggling now. And, uh, you know, they're eight points behind Hibs. I think, I think it's really gone for them. Big disappointment. That's maybe why John... Never spoke yesterday, but it was always going to be a tough game going there because Gordon Chisholm's got them playing some decent football. He's getting results. He's got them to the cup final. Um, the Lucas have to play me a bit more confidence as well, and the players are understanding what he wants and they're reacting to him. And uh, he's certainly done himself no harm at all if he wants that job. And I think he's already said he does want it. But Eddie Thompson's not going to be rushed, and uh, be interesting to see how Eddie Tom what Eddie Thompson's take on, on the job Gordon Chisholm's doing. You have to spare thought at this stage for Ian McCall and the work he's done in putting that team together. Things weren't going his way. You can understand why Eddie Thompson did what he did. But uh, since McCall went, uh, Dundee United with the same players have achieved some important results. Yeah, they have. Um, I mean, wins breed confidence uh, throughout the whole club and, and what a week it's been in getting to a Scottish Cup final, beating Rangers and then, and then beating Hearts. Um, I don't think you can get a, be a better week than that. But um, no, Gordon Chisholm's done, done really well. Um, I still think he'll probably say that Ian McCall's done probably most of the hard work before he took over. Um, but no, the players seem to be, be turning it around now. 
you get the feeling Barry Robson has uh, rediscovered his confidence at a crucial, crucial stage for Dundee United. And it was his goal which put the Tanadai's team in front against Hearts. Yeah, I mean, he's, again, he's been a good player for them. He's, he's very, very capable. We've seen him score some, some cracking goals this season. Not, not great defending from Hearts. And I think there lies John Robertson's problem. He's got a 17-year-old at left-back and a 17-year-old in Jason Thompson at right-back as well. So it's very difficult with that sort of inexperienced side. I mean, these are very, very young lads to defend properly. But Robson is a player that's capable. And as I say, Gordon Chisholm at the moment is getting the best out of the players. And it has cost money for Eddie Thompson to get rid of Ian McCall but not as much as it would cost if they went down to, to the first division. And at this moment in time, they look as if they've got a better chance now than they did a month ago of staying in the, of staying in the top league. So one 17-year-old had a struggle there, Jason Thompson, uh, accepting some blame for that uh, goal for Dundee United. Um, and, well, in fact, before we get to Gary Kenneth, let's get to Lee Miller and the equaliser for Hearts. And I just wonder how, much, how many pounds have been added to the asking price at Bristol City for, for Lee Miller after yet another goal. Yeah, I mean, another, another good signing um, this season. Um, he's come in and, and scored a good few goals. Um, a great cross here, a delivery again, and, and Big Lee's got a, a great head onto the, onto the ball and deflected into the, into the corner of the net. Um, I can think of a few other clubs who would fancy having him on board. Yeah, I'd, I'd think well, so, Well, yeah. it was 75,000 it was for him. Uh, when he first came, <clears throat> let me tell you, it's not that now. And as has been reported, we don't know, that maybe Rangers are interested in him as well. So, you know, it's not just the fact, can Hearts afford them? Are Hearts going to be on the club in the bidding for him? You know, I don't think he's going to go back to Bristol. And Rangers, if Rangers are involved, then, you know, I don't think Hearts stand a chance. I'm sure John Robertson, looking at the form Lee Miller's been, would love to hang on to him. Well, here is 17-year-old Gary Kenneth hitting the post uh, yesterday for Dundee United. I don't know what they've been feeding him up at Tanadice. He's a big lad, but he can play a bit as well. Well, we, he made his full debut, I think it was, in our live match against Celtic. When I, I thought he acquitted himself very, very well that day. I mean, he's very young and he, what a size he is. I mean, he's, uh, he looks a decent player. Maybe Ian McCall didn't fancy him earlier on in the season and he wasn't getting a chance, obviously, playing in the reserves or the under-21s. Gordon Chisholm's came in, he's gave him his chance. He's big and strong. A bit raw, obviously, because he's inexperienced, but he's doing a great, great job for Gordon Chisholm. Now, how good did this feel for Grant Brebner, a confirmed hibby, uh, sealing victory against Hearts, and such an important win for Dundee United. This changes it from one point to three. Yeah, it does. Um, again, sitting, <laughs> sitting at home yesterday, I wasn't, wasn't wanting this to happen, but um, no, it's a great uh, touch and size from, from Stevie Crawford. Um, and a good touch by Grant, he just opens his body up and um, that's a great finish. Uh, Craig Gordon's got no chance for that one. It's such a vital um, goal for Dundee United to, to pick up three points. Um, it's just a great result for them. But again, you know, Ian McCall, I don't want to keep happening on about Ian McCall, <clears throat> but he'll be sitting in his house watching thinking, well, any chance of him doing that for me? You know, and as I don't think Grant Bremen has quite fulfilled the potential McCall th thought he had in going to Dundee United, but he certainly has there. doesn't matter if it's against Hearts, it's all about getting points for Dundee United and to win, as Gordon Chisholm said, and to get the goal so late, leaving it almost impossible for Hearts to come back and the manner in which he scored it as well, it was a great goal and what a vital three points for them and uh, I'm sure all the Tannadice fans up in the Dundee United think they've now got a great chance of staying in, I certainly do the way they're playing. Three points against Rangers, three points against Hearts, but still some work to be done for Dundee United if they are to secure their status um, in the SPL for next season. Home to Livingston next. Then they've got uh, the Dundee Derby at Dens. Then it's Kilmarnock at home, Dunfermline at Tannadice as well. And finally, they're at the Cali Stadium to play Inverness on the final weekend. As for Hearts, it looks like this. Another Edinburgh Derby next weekend. It's at Easter Road. Motherwell at home, Rangers away, Celtic at home, Aberdeen away. And, uh, well, it's going to be tough now for Hearts, maybe impossible for them to reach third spot.